Welcome back to the channel, everybody. It's time to combine some wheat. And in order to do that, we need to get this big machine ready. Point to that. that one. So it just got out of hibernation. We need to basically, there's a couple of small little issues with some bearings, uh, nothing real big. Put all the pans on underneath. Because we're combining small grains, we need some spiked uh, return covers to put on, which Augie and I already got that all done. So now we're gonna start it back up after doing a full service on it and get it out of here, fill it up with fuel and some government juice. So let's get that done. I forgot what I was doing. See, you guys got me all distracted. I was gonna go over here and get something. A drone? Yeah. No, not a drone. Not a Wrenches. drone. Okay, well, let's just shut this all up. Uh, we'll check everything over quick. No. should be good to get it out, but we do have to move all that equipment. There's one other thing I want to do. I want to put LED lights on the flashers because those old incandescent bulbs are not very bright. So we need a Phillips screwdriver, Augie. Can you go get one of those? Oh, uh, yeah. Can't get me on video. Yeah. Make sure Russell's in the video. Okay, <laughs> so all I'm going to do is take this lens off find what kind of bulb it is, and then order some LED bulbs to replace these. I don't know if it's gonna work because there's not a lot of resistance in LED bulbs, like there is an incandescent, and so they might flash really fast, <laughs> but they are gonna be a lot brighter. Come off of there. If it doesn't work, you just hit it. Oh, okay. So just hit it when it doesn't work? Of course. This is supposed to be an easy thing, like two seconds. <coughs> there it goes. Look at that bulb. It is very dusty. So let's go over here. Eleven fifty-six is the bulb number. And we'll just clean this one off for now and put it back on. But eleven fifty-six, remember that, Augie. 1156, okay. 1156, and then I'll order it. Yeah, it actually has. Oh, I like my girls a little bit older. You ever get a song stuck in your head and then all day you gotta deal with that? Yeah. Weird, Weird. part of your brain. Yeah. Okay. All right, now let's go fire this thing up. It's been sitting in here a few weeks, so. Fired right up. that's filling up we can go do something else let's go take a look at the head situation and see how much it's going to take to get this big head out it's always packed in there tight let's go check that out while that's filling there it is okay basically what I'm going to try to do is just remove these two semis Oh no, the hitch is on the other side. Sugar, sugar, sugar. That's the back of the head, so I can't pull it out that way. I mean, I suppose I could, but that's gonna be a challenge. Oh, 
all of that stuff's in the way. Get skinny. Get skinny. Grain cart, not the worst. That tractor, not the worst. Sprayer, baler. And then we have a whole bunch of grain bin accessory parts on pallets. All gotta come out. That's gonna take a couple hours just by itself, just to get this stuff out. Turn that way. Yeah, I mean, I always put it in from that second door, but I don't know what was the reason we put it in this way now. I don't know. You might be right. It might be hotter than yesterday. It's heavy today. I'm, I'm so exhausted, it's not funny. What's for lunch? Chicken. Chicken breast. Oh, and chicken legs. We did a boo-boo. We put the head in the wrong way. Okay, so what's that mean? Well, every single one of these things has to come out. Okay. I will tell you one thing, the AC in this machine is like, it's almost, after, I don't know how do you describe it, have you ever, like, it is so humid out today, so humid in Wisconsin, like the weather, it's, it's unbearable, I'm just sweating moving around, and then you come in here to this absolutely freezing ice cold AC and it, it sets you back a little bit, look at me complain those farmers I tell you they got it too good okay what I'm gonna do is kind of pull off into this field I'm actually just gonna run this machine last year I had a little tick when the machine was on and running the rotors it was you know tick 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 and I could tell it was coming from the left side of the machine towards the rear and I believe it was a belt that was almost shot there's a big four rib belt back there that comes off the transmission and there was a huge gap in it uh, that the backing came off. And I think every time it hit the idler, that idler would go tick, tick, tick as it came around. So we're gonna check that that is gone. Okay, here we go. Okay, machine turned on. Put to about 1500 RPM. Rotors, rotors are in neutral. I had them in neutral last year. Let's check if that tick is still there. It's gone. So that was definitely the problem. So I really took a chance on that. I was, I was hoping that was the problem. Common sense kind of said, you know, as that belt goes around and it hits that idler, it's a very long belt, it was almost $400 just for the belt, that it was, that idler would just jump ever so slightly and go tick, 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 and then as RPM increased, tick, 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 so. Oh, it feels good to have that fixed. Let's go fill up with GoGo -Go government juice.
just jumping back up in the combine and I just realized I almost hit our shed. Look at this. Don't tell anybody. Okay, Russell's already got a bunch of this equipment out and it's almost lunchtime. Master Chef. What's next, Russ? Okay. Green cart? Yeah. You wanna eat lunch first? Because there's one thing we take very seriously around here, and what is that? Lunch. Lunch. <laughs> See what kind of spread we have today. Is this wrong? No, that's right. Yes. What is this? Okay. So after, I don't know, an hour and a half of finagling everything around, that head, that drape ride was so tight to the wall, and it has four-wheel steer, that it took most of that time just to wiggle that thing out of there without like moving everything in here but we got it uh we got stuff put back away actually and now we have a combine and a sprayer that needs to be put away but the sprayer needs to be rinsed out so i think what we're going to do is put the combine away and then i'll show you what we're going to do on this head you're going to be with dad mm -hmm. for the rest of the day mm -hmm. thumbs up or down i won't look i won't look okay it's a thumbs up Always disconnect the batteries. There you go. Next thing on the list, Emma, is what? Clean sprayer. Clean sprayer out. Boy, it looks like it's gonna get wicked. Look, it's not gonna rain. I just want the rain. So our lid blew off of this grain bin up here and stayed open, obviously, and something's wrong with that little strap up there. So I'm just gonna take a bungee up there and you guys come with me. We can get a good view of what we're looking at today. shop and shed. There's the home farm. There's the storm. Pretty neat little view if you ask me. We're gonna go check on some water hemp that I killed the other day to see if it came back or not. So we just made it up to the field. Uh, I had a pretty pretty good load, pretty hot load in here to kill this water hemp because it was everywhere and uh, yeah I threw cobra in the mix. That's what's making these soybeans uh, look like they're dead. They are not dead. They're going to be just fine. But it does look like 99% of this water hemp is, is going to be dead. That's what it looks like. That's what we're trying to kill. Now, if you're not familiar, water hemp is resistant to just about everything, including glyphosate. And it's a very, very hard weed to kill. It propagates very quickly. It grows very quickly. You can actually, you can, if you don't get all the growing points with what you're spraying, uh, it'll just die at that growing point and then grow, keep growing from the next growing point. It's, it's just a, it's a wicked weed to try to kill and you don't want it in your fields. Not great, but not a disaster. I think I've been saying this most of the day. <laughs> clean the sprayer out but it's pretty dirty so I think a quick rinse on um, a pressure washer will go a long way let's do that first then we'll clean it out Whew. it is warm in here and the AC in this thing is lackluster That's just fresh water. I'm gonna give it a couple minutes, rinse about 100 gallons through it, then we're gonna go open the valves and drain the tank. And that'll be it for today on this machine.
sprayer is done. And I think what I'm gonna do the rest of the day is work on this combine head, this draper head. And probably end the video with this here. And I'll just update you guys when I get it all done. I do wanna show you, like I had stated earlier, there's gonna be a major update kit that cost almost $3,000 that's gonna go here in the middle to update this center drive, which I had a lot of issues with. I've had two of these heads. I had a 30 foot and now this 40 foot. It's been okay, but for some reason on this 40 foot, I am breaking these little stubs and it's causing a lot of damage to this cast piece, which is very expensive. So we're gonna, we updated and I'll let you know what I think about that update once I get it installed. So thanks for watching the video. I'll see you guys next time with some more updates when we're harvesting some wheat, hopefully.